Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or comment down below because it really does help my channel. Today's What's For Dinner, I've got some new meals for you. And um, you know, we love a good taco bowl. So that was of course good. The lemon chicken was delicious. And of course, this is a repeat, but the uh, kielbasa chowder is still one of our favorites. Um, but let's just get started. Okay, so this night is pretty self-explanatory. I made up some of the Marie Callender's chicken pot pies. I do use foil like strips on the edges to keep the crust from getting too dark. And then I just serve this up with some cold beets and some cherry tomatoes with some ranch on them. Quick, easy, and we both really, really love a pot pies. You can't go wrong with a Marie Callender's pot pie. Okay, so for this meal, you're just going to take one pound of ground beef and brown that up. So I'm using my meat chopping tool to break that up. You're just going to cook it till it's browned, add some seasonings, garlic powder, onion powder, um, some simple seasonings like that just for some additional flavor. And then once it's no longer any pink remaining, you're going to add in a package of taco seasoning. I give that all a good stir to kind of get the meat coated up a bit. Then add in two cups of beef broth. You can use water for this as well. Um, you definitely don't have to use beef broth. I just like the additional flavor to that, but it's perfectly fine with just water. Give that all a good stir. Let that come to a boil, and I'm adding in two cups of minute rice. Um, that's the great thing about this. It makes it a very quick meal. So I mix that in, push it in the liquid, and this part is optional. You can add beans on top and corn. If you do add something like that, black beans, I did pinto don't stir it in. just leave it on top place the lid on top of that then lower the heat to low and let that simmer for five minutes and once that's done then you can go ahead and stir everything together um you could taste your ri rice some you know if you like it softer you could put an additional minute or two on it um and that could vary depending if you added a bunch of stuff on top of it you know you might have to add an extra minute or so and then it's time for the cheese go ahead and throw that on there. I didn't have a Mexican blend, but that's one that's really good with this. I think this is just a Colby Jack blend and just pour whatever amount you want on top of that and place the lid on and let that just melt the cheese and then it's ready to go. I like to serve it with some avocado, tomato, and lettuce because we're going to do some bowls here. So I put sour cream, my favorite hot sauce, and some tortilla chips. Now, we love a good taco bowl, so this is really, really good for us. Um, we just love the flavors of taco bowls, and how easy they are is even better. This one is so great using that minute rice. Now, if you're one of those people who freeze up, like, cooked ground beef, and you had pulled out that out the night before to defrost, you could literally have this whole meal done in 10 minutes. And how great is that? Like, it's so hearty. It's filling. Everybody will enjoy a good taco bowl. So I've made this before, but it's been a while, and it's one of our favorites, so I'm going to show it again because it's really easy. You're going to take a kielbasa. I do rounds, and I actually cut it in half. I like half moons. Um, I like them to brown up better. Now, the recipe I'll have linked for you doesn't have you brown up the kielbasa, but that's just how I really enjoy it. So I'm thankful that my slow cooker can go ahead and saute that, but you could use a pan as well and then put it in there, and then you'll add in one medium diced up yellow onion to that, and some garlic i just squeeze use some squeeze garlic it calls for a clove of garlic just whatever amount works best for you then add in four cups of chicken broth i'm just using this aldi chicken stock and the recipe also has you add in frozen corn two cups of frozen corn now i don't normally keep that on hand i just don't have the freezer space for it i use canned corn so i'll tell you what to do with that later um, but you'll also add in a half a teaspoon each of dried thyme and black pepper and salt and then you're going to add in diced up potatoes. It's about six. I used about seven actually diced up potatoes. And I like to use my little dicing little chopper tool to, to make them like a nice easy cube style. Um, I really love that and it, they come out perfect. I give that all a good stir. I add in a bay leaf. I had two small little mini ones. So I put those in, put the lid on. We're cooking that. I'm cooking it on low for eight hours. And you can also do high for five to six hours. And then once it's done... Just pull out the bay leaves, and this is where I add in the corn, and it's actually, mine was done before eight hours I got home, so it was already ready. The potatoes were tender, so I add those two cans of drained corn in there. Now, I didn't really measure, like, the whole two-cup thing. I just do what works best for us, and I really like corn in this, so that's why I put two cans, 
and I put the lid back on that to just like warm up while I measure out the heavy cream and grate my cheese so once it's warmed up for about 5-10 minutes I'll add in one cup of heavy cream and then the cheese that I grated up is sharp cheddar I'm pr pretty sure I used a extra sharp cheddar because that's just what I really love and you'll add in eight ounces of that I just kind of wing it and see what kind of like works best for us we love cheese so if it's a little extra I don't mind it at all and I give that all a good stir and let that just melt again I just place the lid back on to help with that like cheese just melting it doesn't take very long at all and then after you can taste the juice of the soup if you want to add some additional salt and pepper um, I did that it really helps bring out those flavors and this is it plated. I served with some green onions and extra cheese on top. I made some crescent rolls. And wow, I just really can't tell you how much we love this soup. Like, it's so delicious. In fact, I don't even need the kielbasa in it. This makes a delicious potato soup. Like, if you didn't have kielbasa or you didn't like kielbasa, you could use just cr crumbled bacon on top after. Like, bacon bits it would just be delicious because just the flavor of this potato soup is so good. On this night, my boyfriend and I just went for a drive, so we're literally eating in the car. We stopped and got some Panda Express. This was such a great night. Like, I love, like, the times we just kind of, like, go for a drive and chill. Like, that used to be something we really did, like, when we were friends prior to being in a relationship. And um, I always just find it fun, so I love Panda Express. It's been a little while since we've had it, so I got half and half of fried rice and chow mein. We got some orange chicken and their honey walnut shrimp, which is both of our favorites. It's so delicious. So this was a really, like, happy and good time meal for us. So my friend had made this meal one time at one of our girls' nights, but unfortunately the pin is no longer valid on Pinterest, but I'm pretty sure I remember it. So it's like a three-pound pork roast and I put that in the bottom of the crock pot. This is my instant pot slow cooker. And then all you do is top it with some teriyaki sauce. Now I just have this sweet teriyaki and I ha I'm using about a cup's worth. I'm not really measuring. It's around that and that simple as that. Just prop that in there and put it on for, you can put it for low for eight hours, you know, eight to 10 hours typically. And then high, probably five to six. I'm doing the low option. And this is what it looks like when it's done. It's just in its juices and we shredded that up really quick pretty simple you can use forks or your little hand mixer and i like to take the teriyaki juice and like pour that back into the meat to keep it all moist and then i got up the toppings that were in the original recipe which was pineapple jalapeno red onion and cilantro now of course you could customize that customize that to your preference of whatever toppings you like I served the taco meat on corn tortillas because that's how I had it originally and it was really good that way. Um, I think it complements it well. You could of course use flour if that's your preference. And I had leftovers later with some um, Monterey Jack cheese and that was pretty good as well. But um, this night I just had it the way it originally was and I made corn in the air fryer um, at like 390 degrees for 10 minutes flipping halfway. Seasoned it with just some of my favorite seasonings and oil and that was the best way I've ever had corn on the cob. So definitely making it that way from now on and I'll show it in a video next time. And then um, I've made this cilantro lime rice before. I'll look for that video and try to link that for you in the description box down below. But if not, it's pretty easy. You just cook up your rice and then... Once it's cooked up, I, like I cook my rice with salt and butter, so that adds some extra flavor. You'll just add lime juice to your preference and some extra salt if you need to, and then cilantro. And I could honestly, no joke, eat this rice every single day, but this whole meal was really delicious together. In fact, I think the rice really complemented the tacos, and the corn was just phenomenal. Like, we loved it, but um, the tacos are definitely a, a great option for something different, a more sweet-style taco, um, but, but very delicious. I'm starting this off by taking two large chicken breasts that I went ahead and sliced in half lengthwise and to make them thinner and then I'm pounding them out to be an even thickness and about a half inch thick. Um, I'm using a gallon Ziploc bag like on top. You could use saran wrap and just to avoid any splatter when hitting them and just use your meat mallet on the textured side to go ahead and do that and then season both sides uh, or oh, I patted them dry and then season both sides with some lemon pepper seasoning. You can add salt if your lemon pepper seasoning doesn't have salt in the ingredients. 
Then to a bowl, I'm combining a half a cup of flour with a teaspoon of garlic powder and a quarter cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese and just stirring that all together to combine those ingredients. Then I'm going to take my chicken and just dredge it into the flour mixture. I, to me, I kept feeling like I wanted a thicker breading, but it, and I was even going to make like an egg wash and make this like a thicker breading. I'm glad I didn't. It was perfect the way it was. But yeah, just coat that and any excess that falls off, just let it go ahead and fall off. And I repeated that with all the chicken breast pieces. Then to a pan over medium high heat, I'm adding a quarter cup of olive oil. And I'm adding my chick chicken breast into the hot oil. Um, three fit in fine. And I was thinking, you know, I didn't want to overcrowd it. So I left the other one for a second batch. But I kind of wish I just pushed them all into my pan I feel like it would have been fine and big enough because then I wouldn't have to do a second batch but you're going to cook those five minutes on each side or so until they have an internal temperature of 165 degrees and once they're done remove them from the pan and add in a half a cup it says they use like wine I don't normally use wine in my recipes so I use just chicken broth and then I added about four cloves worth of minced garlic then stir that together, scraping up any of those brown bits on the bottom of the pan. You're going to lower the heat to medium and let this bubble for about four minutes, letting this reduce by half. Then you'll add in a, one and a half cups of chicken broth to that with one bouillon cube. You can also use better than bouillon a teaspoons worth of it, I'm sure, if you didn't have a bouillon cube. And then one teaspoon of mustard powder and mix that all together. Then bring that to a boil and let that simmer for five minutes to thicken up and then lower the heat to low and add in three-fourths cup of room temperature heavy cream as well as one cup of grated parmesan cheese and three tablespoons of lemon juice. My lemon came up with four uh, tablespoons worth but I figured if I needed the extra tablespoon I would add it later but it actually was a good amount having three tablespoons worth but anyways just mix it all together my cheese was bagged cheese originally so it might be a little bit more textured than if you grated it but I really didn't notice once it was with the pasta and the chicken um, and then you can taste that sauce and add additional salt and pepper to your liking and then add your chicken back into that cream sauce and let them come back up to like warm now I had my plate sitting in the micro so that helped keep them warm but still I just put them in the sauce let them warm back up I served this over some linguine pasta um over pasta was amazing the next time I really want to try this over mashed potatoes or with mashed potatoes I bet that lemon cream sauce would be so good over mashed potatoes like it was incredible that lemon cream sauce like I could just have that on a bowl of pasta and be so happy it was so good and then I had a bunch of broccoli in the fridge, so I figured I'd go ahead and just roast that up. It got a little more roasted than I would have liked, but it was still delicious in the end, and it worked really well with this meal. And I'd say this is a huge hit for us. Like, I loved it a lot. I love lemon chicken, but it wasn't, like, overbearing. That creaminess to it was really nice and, like, light at the same time. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all are having a great day.